Hey everybody, I'm Bob from Black Arrow Gaming and welcome back to my fifth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. Welcome back to Ganon's Conquest of presumably Hyrule, I guess. I guess this is Hyrule. Anyway, we're going to carry on. Um, it actually might be more Karzin's Conquest. He's been doing most of the fighting lately, but I got to give props to Ganon and his army uh, for taking the Halfling Capital and then uh, put me in a position in the last episode to actually knock out the Halfling by turning her into ash uh, with Disintegrate, which was glorious, thanks to these two crusaders for helping out with that. I did see your comments, a lot of people reminding me about that item sack right there. I think there was like five or six of you guys that called that one out, so appreciate that. Uh, Boru Apogabod, Poro, the, Boru Apogabog, Red Marut, Blurry Intervision, and Adam James. Thank you guys for pointing that out to me. Appreciate that. I will pick that up on the next turn with one of those Crusaders. Um, Red Marut had a lot to say this week. I wrote down some of the stuff I wanted to touch on in this episode. One of them was trying to get back to a wealthy empire um, would be helpful for, well, a number of reasons. I've had kind of some morale issues lately, uh, most prominently with Karzin, I think. Um, and they've kind of manifested even worse because of this... Uh, Dread Omen thing that I've been dealing with for a couple turns now, but <coughs> excuse me. Um, but back home, I'm also having trouble, or was having trouble, with morale in this city. However, it suddenly jumped up, so I'm able to make Crusaders or Exalted. Sorry, I can make Exalteds in one turn now, which is nice. I was looking at this, not entirely sure why it went up, unless I improved my race happiness with the Orcs. Um, but aside from that. It doesn't really tell me. Like, there's not really... I, I, I know that my units get plus 100 morale for taking out a leader, because it tells me right there, plus 100 or vanquished a player, which lasts for 10 turns, which is great. But I don't know why the city's morale went up, unless I completed something that uh, boosted it. I can't remember what I completed on the turn prior to this. Oh, wait a second. Hang on. Uh... Maybe it was a Celestial Chamber. The city gains an additional 100 morale. If that's the case, and I was looking at it before and now looking at it after, it's actually really convenient because that kind of solved my, my problem there. Um, Red Maru did suggest, or point out that I don't have a Master's Guild in the city yet, which is correct. I actually forgot I hadn't built one of those yet, but it doesn't look like I'm going to need it. So I think I'll just carry on with Work Exalted production and we'll get a whole bunch of those guys up in the air as soon as possible. We've also got uh, Red Maroon and Blurry and Revision. Both said that the undead in the uh, Farron and Karzin battle, or actually pointed out, and I noticed this too, but didn't really mention anything on camera. I don't know why, but... Um, so when I fought this battle here, I attacked with this stack. And since the battle took place on this tile, it technically, the morale penalty wasn't affecting these guys because it was out of Dread Omen's range. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if it would have worked if I had attacked with a different stack because they would have still technically been standing outside of the border or standing on that tile there within the borders of the city. But the battle officially takes place on that center tile. So I don't really know for sure. Um, that might be worth trying to remember to test at some point if I have an opportunity. Um, so I'll try to keep that in mind. Red Marut also had a good idea for founding new cities and safe locations to boost race happiness which I went and looked around a bit. Um, this area up here is, is, will be good territory once I get somebody to deal with the uh, Haunted Boneyard and Bandit, Bandit Camp up there. Um, but I don't have anyone to do that right now. I don't even know if that army could even handle a Bandit Camp right now, much less a Haunted Boneyard. But um, Maybe if I ever get the dragons on my side. I kind of need them there as vassals right now, just guarding this pathway. But eventually I'll get something up there to clear that, maybe. Um, and actually, maybe once I get a stack of Exalteds, they could go up and deal with all of that, probably. And they could do it pretty quick, too. But uh, I'll do something about that eventually. But underground, there's some good spots that I could put more cities that I wasn't even really thinking about. Um, one of them is over here. I could get one by... Uh, Oops, sorry. That's well. I mean, there that is a spot right there I could use um, by the gold mine. But I was thinking more like up here. This would be a really nice spot to get both the uh, both the 
trading post and the mine. That would be quite a healthy chunk of gold right there. I think this city is going to be the ideal one to produce a settler. I might also make a builder to go out and actually do forts and stuff ahead of time, which I never do. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is let the hospital finish, because I need the growth in my goblin cities anyway. So I need that hospital. But I will queue up a builder after that rather than the siege workshop. And then I will let the builder go out there and start kind of making some infrastructure. I'm not really worried about any threats in this area that much. Um, because I'm going to be sending my armies up through here anyway. My go underground goblin armies and stuff. Uh, also another good spot would be up here by the dungeon and those two gold resource structures. Um, and I, I'll have to have my armies. I think I might have them detour and clear some of that stuff out while they're passing through that area. The big beetles and the swarm darters and all those guys. And then uh, down here, there's another one in this, these uh, marshy plains, which the goblins would really like. So um, a few spots I could build the goblin cities and boost race happiness, which I think is a good idea. Um, I actually could probably, I might be able, well, I can't on this turn because I'm, I'm running low on money, but um, maybe I could build a settler in this city and, and get that process at least started. So something to keep in mind. Remind me on future episodes if I forget to do this. Um, Sarah Feingold had... Okay, so talks discussion about what to do with my main armies. And this will kind of segue into the action for this episode, I think. So Sarah Feingold uh, suggested keeping Karzin and Farron on the outskirts of the city and dare, Ar dare, Ar <laughs> she said, dare the Archangels to retake it, um, which I think is a good idea... Because if they do retake it, I could just run back in and then Dread Omen would be gone. But I think I agree. There was a general sentiment in the comments among several people. Captain Cruz, Organism, Beleg, Cuthalion, Tarsac, Red Marut. All you guys were talking about maybe just going crazy and just getting super hyper aggressive with Carson's army. Throw the computer for a loop a little bit. I think I've got enough units in this area to defend if I had to. If like this stuff came my way, you know, obviously... Undead aren't exactly great matches for Archangels, but I got other stuff here with them too. There's some Crusaders coming, Shrine of Smiting, which could at least maybe, I don't know, absorb some damage. Um, I've got other things, plus I got these guys in this area. So, like, if a few units slip through, I could probably handle it. So, I think that's uh, kind of how I'm going to proceed for the time being. I do want to get uh, this road built a bit further, so let's do that. Um... So yeah, that's, uh, I think I'm just going to kind of go crazy with Karzin's army here and have some fun. Um, there was also some discussion, just general comments about what to do down here in the south. Basically, I think the general consensus was don't go after this stuff with Ganon's army alone, which I wasn't planning on. Um, I need to start moving these guys over so Ganon can join up with them. In fact, I might do that now. Uh, I may as well grab the spider uh, web buff while I'm going through gets greater webbing touch which is nice um which army needs it more i think i kind of would like the orc priests to have it uh storm sisters will probably be busy shooting at stuff although that being said this isn't the dreadnoughts army this is the sorcerer's army so storm sisters maybe could take it actually i think i'm gonna give it to because the giants could be just be throwing boulders i'm, I'm basically trying to think of what units could make the most use out of it. Those guys have tireless, so I probably will want them more on defense. So I'm gonna give it to those those guys. I'll give it to the Storm Sisters, mo probably mostly the support units. And I'll just let the infantry do it. The units smash stuff as they do best. Uh, so we'll do this, move them all. Probably here. We'll grab those haste berries. Here. Now I need to make sure the shrines of smiting are in good stacks. Um, like this guy, or I need to split up my stacks to make sure that each of them can hold a shrine of smiting. Uh, the shrine of smiting obviously it gets damage bonuses and heals based on devout units in the army. All of those guys are devout, so that'd be really good. Um, he's devout. He's devout. I think I might balance this out and maybe put like one of the Storm Sisters up ahead and then put this shrine here. So I'm kind of balancing the damage and healing out between them. Put these two guys here and then throw the giant in with that group in the front. 
and then I can move everybody else kind of forward. I should still be out of range of those enemy armies over there. And uh, Ganon's can, Ganon can slip around down on this side. Hopefully those Hayspreys will be back. No, no, they won't. I had to use them to get the Crusaders down there in time to kill the Halfling. But um, Ganon can swing around to the south of that mountain range. And then I'll probably meet up with these guys and I'll loop around and hit that city at about the same time. Hopefully there's nothing hiding out here in the shadows that I can't see. I think, I think I'm okay. All right. <coughs> so now for the main attraction over here, um, Carson's stuff needs to probably go. I, so I was looking at this stuff and I'm not so worried about the single archangel and these couple juggernauts here, but I want to kill everything up here if I can. Um, especially that a group of six. I don't want them slipping by and causing chaos. And I think I've got just the thing to do it. So they're all on the water, but Karzin can fly. And uh, the Exalted can fly, so we can go with him. The snakes can swim, as can the glutton. And they're all at pretty full health. And Karzin has undead healing on top of that. Uh, the bone dragon isn't necessarily the best thing to go after that stuff with, but then again, neither is the Wraith, really. I'm not really sure who else I want to bring with them. It'd be, it'd be one of these units. The Bone Dragon has more health, I guess, so I'll send him along. Um, either would be good, because the Undead are nice in this situation, because the Frost Tanks won't really bother them that much. They have, like, 40% Frost Protection. So I'll send the Bone Dragon with them. They can all go up and make a mess over here. Oh, hey, there's a little Nightshade Fairy in here, too. Um, what I can do is, let's see, attack with Karzin on this tile. We'll just leave the Nightshade very out of it. Uh, I definitely don't want to attack any of those tiles because then I'll draw more units into the battle than I really want. It is only a probable victory. Uh, well, at least that's what it says. I think my odds are better because their stuff's all embarked, so it's going to be weaker. Uh, but maybe I can fit that Wraith in here, too, now that I think of it. He's got a ton of movement as well. Um... He moved here. How much would he have left? 22. So I could still get him. Yeah, I could get the Wraith here. Attack with Karzin, and then the Wraith would have enough movement to pull back around and go south. It's just one extra unit to help out. Um, because this is going to be a water battle, so moving... I, oh, it wouldn't hurt to have extra units in. The question is, how much movement do the rest of these guys have? Could they move up here? And I don't think they could. That's two movement, four movement, two and two. I think I have advanced logistics. So two and four is six, two is eight. No, I think they actually could do that. 14, 12, yeah. Yeah, I could do this with everybody, I think. So what I will do then is move and I'll have the giant, because he can throw boulders and stuff. Is that wetlands or fertile plains? That's fertile plains. So yeah, they could do that and then still have room to make it back down there. I could get Karzin, or not Karzin, Farron in for the extra undead healing. Speaking of Farron, I could get this guy in for the extra undead healing. Although he might not make it back. Eight, four. Does that base move cost four? for a bridge. I don't know. Bridges might take a little bit more to move on to than normal roads. Well, actually it's saying the water has a base move cost. Eh, I don't know if the halfling will be able to make it, but I think I still want him here just to help patch that wraith up, so we'll do that. Um, I should have more than enough. Well, actually, it's not going to matter because I'm going to. That's only one juggernaut. That's not even full stack. This is the hard battle. So, this is the one I need to focus on. Uh, got a problem. Oh, it's not even drawing those other units in, though. Uh, okay, that's right. That makes it. I thought maybe they would auto embark, but that's not how it works. Um, they have to actually embark, and only then can they fight. But that's okay. I think I'm fine here. I think I'm going to be all right. There's a lot of cannons on the water, but they're also going to be slow. Oh, crap, except they get the jump on me. And Farron is not here to revive anyone, so that's worth keeping in mind. Um, 
The cannons pretty much just used all their firepower. I'm not that worried about... Let's see, what do we got? That's the juggernaut. I think the cannons all just fired. So I need... I want them out of this, like, right away. Um, the glutton can kill the frost tank, and he could still tank another hit if he needed to. So the snake is just not quite fast enough to get where I want him to go. All right, and I can't absorb... Oh, can I transfer pain on the glutton? They seem to like to pick on him a lot, so... Sure, why not? Although I think I may need to be more aggressive. Um, I want that snake to go after the juggernaut there. And I want pretty much everyone else to go after these cannons while they're weak. The frost tanks I would like to take out sooner rather than later. So I think I'll do that now. There's another cannon down there. The snake can deal with that one. Or maybe the exalted could. Actually, I'm going to let... Yeah, we're just going to be really aggressive. I don't want to give these guys a chance to regroup or you know, do whatever. I want to. I want them out of this game immediately, or out of this battle as soon as possible. So, Snake's doing what he needs to do. Glutton can kill that frost tank and still be fine. I think I want Karzin up here, just in these guys' faces. Um, I could have probably Sun Spirit one first, but that's okay. I don't really have time to mess around too much. They might shoot cars and then back that stuff up, but but he'll be able to chase them down. Oh crap, I forgot about explosive ice death. I don't want him to die. Uh, well, let's do this. He could still do he could still do his Ice Nova. I don't know. I might lose that Glutton here. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I have a spell that could help. Uh, Smite's obviously not going to do anything against that crap. Wreck might help. Let's see. I could... Uh, rebirth won't work. I could just try Disintegrating. It's a 55% chance. So I don't really want that thing alive anymore. What would wreck? It's not going to give me enough to kill it. I think I might just try disintegrating this guy. I don't really want him hitting the glutton. The glutton will probably be okay. Dang it. Fail. Okay. Alright. The glutton will probably be okay. I should have actually maybe positioned a dragon differently to lure him into attacking from a different angle. Um, the Wraith King, I think... I don't really want him taking too powerful of a hit. I think he could handle one. It's hard to tell. It does 20 and 19, and he's got 27 health. You know what? I'm going to back him off. We'll play it a little safer with the Wraith. They might go after him now anyway, but uh, we'll see what they do. Ah, dang it, there goes my glutton, and I won't be able to get him back up. Yeah, I forgot about... That's why I wanted to kill that thing. Oh well, I didn't get the 55%, but... Oh, such is RNG in these games, I suppose. Rest in peace, glutton, you will be missed. But everyone else is going to get broken very quickly now. And this is still a net win for me, I think. Um... These armies really needed to go. All right. Let's just break that. And Karzin, if he war cries, he can get a couple hits in here. Alright. That thing shouldn't be able to move without dying. And I think Wraith King's just gonna chill. Alright. I don't think there's a way I can get that glutton back without Farron being here, unfortunately. Yeah. Nope, just gotta deal with it. It's alright. 
I'm gonna let that snake get the kill. Karzin probably could heal somebody? Uh, actually, Karzin and the orcs are fine. It's the undead that need the healing. Well, Karzin could take a nourishing meal, I suppose. Um, I want to make sure I can kill this thing, though. It'd be ideal if I could stun it or just outright kill it. That's fine, too. All right, Karzin, patch yourself up. And Snake Boy, kill Juggernaut. If I could click on said snake. Wait, why? Why, why can't I attack him? Is he safeguarded or something? What is this? What is going on? Why can't I attack with the snake? Oh, the snake is dazed. Well, that sucks. Because now that thing's going to be able to do a broadside. Oh. Well, if I'd have known that, I'd have just attacked it with Carson. <laughs> Crap. Um, I might be able to... A purifying burst, maybe? Well, it would... It would help, I think, but I don't have enough mana to cast it. Could do... I don't really have many good options here. Could maybe wreck it. I don't want to risk... Because what I don't want to do is put the dragon in there and risk... You know, he already fired his big shot. So he can move and shoot at whatever else he wants as long as it's not the dragon. So I'm gonna move the dragon way out of the way. I'm not even gonna risk him. He can move and shoot at Karzin or whatever if he wants to, that's fine. Just as long as he's not... I mean, he actually the most he can do is fire broadside. So at best he can go over there where Karzin and that other snake are and broadside, but he'll probably sit right where he's at. All right, that kind of sucks because now my snake is really beat up. Dang it. Can you stun him? Is he stunned? He is stunned. You know what, I'm gonna just kill him on this turn because I don't want the snake to- Oh crap, ah, uh, Karzin's undead healing. I forgot about that. I, I, I remembered as soon as I clicked go. Ah well. At least I killed those armies. Now I can start making some progress. This isn't exactly the start I was hoping for, but I can at least now start making some progress inwards. Um, I definitely need... this battle look like see this is kind of a problem okay well it's only the fairy though it's not the juggernaut too what is this weird crappy fog on the battlefield it's strange it's like blighted ocean or something um, I want health for the snake Wraith needs to probably just take it easy back there. And I'm gonna absorb pain for the dragon if I can, just to keep him safe. And we'll let the fairy come in and do something stupid and then just counterattack. It's pretty stupid. All right, gas breath that thing. I don't like. Oh man, he has that fairy had a lot of health. Um, but it's not gonna matter because Karzin is very, very, very strong. All right, how about you war cry and just go smush him? In fact, war cry, hit him with that, then go smush him. <laughs> All right, now I can take this thing out and then properly move in here and clean some stuff up. 
Plus, I got plenty of undead healing opportunities now. So, we just gotta kill one more Juggernaut. And then I've got multiple undead healers here, so... Pretty good shake to patch up my undead in this one, I think. As long as I can avoid getting hit by that Juggernaut first. Alright, he is going for that group there. I want... I want those halflings to heal themselves, actually. I want the Wraith to get healed by probably Arzen. The snake can go here. Firstborns are always valid to just charge those things with. And I think uh, for Farron, probably give the snake a little or no, I can't buff the snake that way. Uh, why don't I heal... I want to heal that other snake with Farron, so he needs to get over there. Okay, so I think I used all my undead... <coughs> Excuse me. I think I used all my undead healing right off the bat. Didn't leave any for the dragon, so he's going to have to sit over here and just try to be safe. And uh, let's transfer pain for Karzen, I guess. Might go after this bunch here. Yeah. All right. But now he's got first horns all over him. And snakes. Alright, all that crap's gone. I should have pretty much a straight shot into the heart of their territory. And I think I'm going to take advantage of that. So, let's see how much movement these guys have if I move them around. They've got enough to get to wherever they, pretty much to wherever they need to go. So I'm going to leave all the undead and all the undead healers together, except for I guess Karzin could still hang on to one. I am bummed out that I lost that glutton still. I liked him. Karzin got an upgrade. That's always useful. We'll uh, give him... Is ranged command of any use to him at all? Not really a very ranged focused army. No, probably not. I mean, I guess... It would benefit the giant a little, but I think I'd rather just buff Karzin. He could use, I could get him more defense, like he doesn't already have enough. Although resistance is very nice in this game. That's actually pretty tempting, but I, I'll go with defense because I can do it twice right now. So now Karzin has 23 defense. Um, I think Karzin could hang on to one of those things, one of those undead. We'll probably split up the snakes and give him one of those. But let's see here what we can do. If I do Karzin and want to take advantage of the fact that he can heal one thing, I can put a snake with him. I know I want the exalted with him. Uh, I know the cadaver probably needs to hang out with most of the rest of the undead. I want the Firstborns with Karzin. I want the Giant with Karzin. Oh, the Halfling's out of movement. That sucks. Didn't notice that. Alright. The Halfling's gonna get left behind here, I think. Although I don't want them flying up and... I don't think they can. Alright. This is probably about as good as this gets right here. I want somebody with that dragon to patch it up. Oh, oh wait, the wraith's not. I keep thinking the wraith has healing, but he does not have healing. We'll do that. And this. Stupid halfling slowing everybody down. As a matter of fact... The halfling can manage on his own. 
All right. Well, that sucks, though, because then the halfling's not healing anybody on this turn, so I'm gonna put the bone dragon back with him. It's kind of a weird split up orientation of my units. I don't like being spread out like this, but at least there doesn't seem to be anything in the area. Um, that was another reason why I wanted to use Karzin for this little ex escapade. He's got that helmet too, which is really nice. So I can see what's around me pretty well. I just have to remember to take it on and put it off. A couple Ice Queens over here, plus the Juggernauts. Um, I'm gonna take that back off before I forget. Put his fighting helmet back on. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm coughing a lot today. Um, down here we've got Dwarf Hall, which is just going to probably need to be uh, recaptured later. There are some buildings. Red Marut pointed this out to me. There's some buildings I can sell to get a little extra money to try to get Wealthy Empire back up. Um, as well as I could probably sell some of Ali's items when I pick them up on the next turn. Like the Dreadnought's Foundry, the Blast Furnace, and then this city, of course, has sorcerer structures in it I can sell. Um, but the cities I've already captured, these elf ones, were independent, so they don't have anything in them that I can sell. And I can't sell anything in these cities until they're done absorbing. So I'll have to try to remember to do that later. Um, all right, this city down here is doing pretty good right now. I think, um, I think I might have to put this one on merchandise for a little while, though. Because I need money elsewhere. Yeah, I think for the time being, I'm just going to do merchandise. Yeah, at least for this turn. Um, Gargador also probably needs merchandise. It really needs a grand palace, but that can wait for now. And Frostmere... I probably am going to sell those stone walls, and here's why. The longer that Dread Omen's up, the worse this is for me. If I sell the stone walls, Dread Omen shrinks. So... And I get 50 gold. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to sell them. And then if they retake the city, good for me. If, I mean, it, if not, whatever. It, it, it doesn't really matter to me that much. But selling them would at least reduce the city's borders making Dread Omen a little bit less of a nuisance if I have to come back here and fight in this area. All right, Raisino also should probably go on merchandise. Pretty much most things should, I think. I would like Raisino to grow to get the extra mana, but uh, I guess mana hasn't been as big of an issue for me lately. I'll leave these guys here to kind of keep an eye on things in this city. I want to clear that very badly. Actually, I should probably... I want to take a peek and see what's in there. So we got a Manticore, a couple Manticore Riders, Phalanxes. Dang, that's not an army the, that I'd want to fight with Orc Exalteds. Because they probably wouldn't... They would probably all die. I was hoping the Orc Exalteds that I was sending back in this area would be able to handle that. But I don't think they could handle that. That's a bit much. I need an actual proper army to get over there at some point. The un some of these undead might be able to pull it off. Or maybe a Shrine of Smiting with enough devout units. Actually, to be honest with you, I'll bet a stack of Orc Crusaders could take that out. I'm not even kidding. Those guys are crazy tough on defense. And as long as none of those Phalanx things have great card... I don't think any of them have Guard Breaker. That's a High Elf and Tigran. The High Elf could stun. That could be a problem. Uh, Tigran wouldn't really matter. They've got Pounce, but I could just sit there and hold on defense. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I could take that with some Crusaders. The Elf Manacore Rider gives me some cause for concern, because if he stuns them, that's bad. But I could also just try disintegrating him or whatever. Um, but I think some people in the comments might get upset if I stop making Exalteds to make Root Crusaders, so I'm still going to make Exalteds. But I, I might want to try to gather together some of the Crusaders I have made and maybe make a run at that thing at some point. For now, I kind of need these units here anyway, so that's fine. 
these units, I would like to get them all together. Is he considered devout because he's support? Yes, he is, so he can go with the Shrine of Smiting. They're all devout. Well, he's not, so he doesn't get to be with the Shrine of Smiting. But everybody else who is devout does. Who's not devout in this group? He's infantry, so he'd be devout. Support is devout. He's devout. He's a builder, so he gets kicked out. Um, where is he going to go, actually? I could send him down underground. I was wondering what to do with him. He might be able to go underground and kind of pave the way for future goblin cities. Uh, where was the cave entrance? It was down there, I think, was maybe the closest one. There was one over here somewhere. Ah, there it is. I think I'm going to send him back in that direction for now, actually. And then maybe the other city that's down here, I could cancel production of the builder I was going to make there. This city over here. Because I already kind of have one ready to go. So I don't want to spend extra money on him. Plus, having another builder underground is probably useful because I can dig tunnels and stuff too. Generate some extra gold that way. Alright. So he hangs out with all the devout units. Uh, the rest of these guys can all party up together. And uh, then I'm going to kind of position them. I want to position them like this. In a defensive posture around that city. But they can move out pretty quickly if they need to. All right, I like that, okay. We'll get uh, another paler up here soon. And let's see what we can s what we can spy out with this cherub. Take those haste berries to prevent them, prevent the enemy from doing anything with them. kind of like him being in that position right there just on the edge of the edge of the enemy's field of view that's a city that Ganon will probably go after Ganon and these armies that's their next target is this city as soon as I'm done dealing with Green's army down here uh, how much more space do they have I could fit another unit with them I may as well I'd like to have a little buffer in this area in case I get surprised by something as for this Shrine of Smiting, I think it's going to do better off with these guys over here. So, because that's where most of these infantry are going. So I think I'm going to send him that way. Oops, I don't know why I skipped turn with them. I need them moving out. Or moving forward with this other stuff. Can he... How far can he move? Okay, they can at least group up together. All right, so I got quite a good army all fitting together here. Um, there are items here I would probably need to sell. They belonged to my Dreadnought. I don't know that I will get him or her back. I don't remember if that was a guy or a girl Dreadnought. Uh, like, part of me wants to hang on to some of this stuff in case I get another hero, but the other part of me is like, no, wealthy empire is more important right now. And then the third part of me is like, who the heck has enough space to hold all this crap? Ganon, I guess. So, Ganon's got five slots. Karzin's got four. Farron's got four halflings. Holding just a tremendous amount of crap. That wyvern's gonna get there in two turns, so I can put that in this slot. Um... Yeah, I should probably do something about all these items, like... Because if I, if I need to leave this city for some reason, I don't want the computers coming back in and getting a bunch of stuff, so... We'll probably just sell all this stuff off. Okay, Ganon's full up, so send things to Farron... And things to Karzin. This does kind of block up their inventory for a while. That's a potion of healing. Eh, 
I might hang on to that because I paid to make it. Just so I have an extra one. Alright, that's... And that's my picnic basket that I made. When is my item going to be done that she's going to need to hold? Because if it's two turns, I'll send her that other pendant. It is two turns. So I'll send her that pendant and then I'll sell it once it gets to her. But I need to clean up my mess here. This is also going to mean that I can't pick up the halflings items down in the cell. These things are just terrifying looking, by the way. Okay, item bag is what I need. Item bag, there we go. So I'll send that to her because she can get it in two turns. And I'll probably just hang on to the picnic basket again. I made it, so um, I'll give it to somebody else later. So I got some armies down here on a wild goose chase. That's a lot of juggernauts. Dang, orange is going to be a tough fight once I get to him. Got people on a wild goose chase chasing this cherub, which is perfectly fine by me. Oh, that may have just ended. I would have, uh, I would like to have grabbed that tower, but that's okay. All right, and then uh, I want this guy positioned roughly here. Uh, these armies may be able to clear that heart of the Arctic on this turn, or on the next turn, and then allow me to start building a fort there. So we'll we'll see. I think I'm gonna leave these guys. They can't quite make it to the safety of protection of all those units, and I don't want them to be used to draw armies into a battle, so I'm going to leave them here. Maybe maybe positioned on that mountain just for a little extra safety. Alright. So down here, where's my... I keep losing track of my swarm darters. I had a bunch of them. Where are they? They're like invisible underground. There they are. Okay. This little guy can catch up and hang out with the tiger, I think. The rest of these guys are on their way up. And we're all gonna go up north and run all the way around. Might send the others out ahead just to get a little head start. I've got haste berries that they can do that. All right. Cherub probably should go northeast and keep an eye out for things slipping through this area. Actually, this path right here is maybe the best for them to watch. It's... Mm, well, it's not really the most direct path to me because the mountain walls sort of block it. Honestly, if they were going to come after me, they'd probably come through here. In fact, they would have to go up and around right now because this is blocking the way. That spawner necromancer circle. I think what I at least want to do is get the cherub on the water over there. I will wait until the next turn to do that because I don't want to get it. I don't want it to get picked off by something. All right, and then I got my underground army with the halfling that can move forward and take some more stuff. Uh, I think Fug will go next, and then I will probably run south and try to get Westville. Hopefully there's a path through there. If not, I might be able to make one. I don't remember if any of these units have tunneling or not. The giant does. Okay, so might be able to just make a path through and grab that. We'll send the scout to grab the tower. And uh, the rest of you guys can just go steamroll that place. In fact, I don't really even need help to do it. Halfling's army can pretty much handle that on their own. That's actually, that's actually kind of a nice city. To be honest. Oh, by the way, I'm going to start casting Transform to Destruction node. Because I've got quite a few mana circles that I would like to turn into Destruction. It's nice because once I have them as destruction nodes, nobody else can change them back to anything else. Alright, well, we'll just go overwhelming force on this group here, in part because it sounds like fun, and in part because it's still probably better to keep everyone together. I wonder if this cherub can kind of spy out down here, see what I'm running into. Very 
Very likely victory. This should be pretty easy. I don't really need to even spend the mana on this one, I don't think. Um, probably pretty much just going to run forward and see what happens. The fairies are a small cause for concern against the orcs, but most of these other units can probably handle them okay. I want the Ice Queen to heal it. Well, probably move forward and heal itself at the same time. And it leveled up. That's cool. Human Knight can charge. Orcs can charge. Giant can tentatively charge, but then stop and throw a big rocket. Something. Probably a unicorn. Actually, probably should have thrown it at the fairies. Um, can still get my thunderstorm going. This is overkill. Yay. Hey, how about you do this? Oh yeah, I need to get him leveled up. That's right. Hopefully he doesn't take a bunch of hits and die, like, right now. Uh, can anyone curse? I could curse the tiger. Alright, I think that's it. Oh, don't need those. End turn. Do your worst. Oh, they used the fairy to cure the curse on the tiger. Alright. Those guys need healing. The dang knights are always dying. No enchanted armor on those guys. Okay, I really want you to level up. You're at 62 out of 70, so I gotta figure out a way to make that happen in this battle. Because then I will have an, another exalted. How about, for the time being, this knight charges here, you run here. Maybe I can soften that unicorn up to kill enough to kill it. Probably not from there, though. He will most likely kill it in one hit. wonder if I could soften it up enough with the giant. 10 to 15. Line of sight penalty minus 50%. So that probably won't work. I would need just the right amount. Alright, let's give you... Touch by Faith. I will just kill the unicorn. Then I will get killing momentum and be able to go kill something else like that trebuchet. And we'll save something else at the end for the, uh, the martyr to kill. Kind of makes him more like a soldier than a martyr, I suppose. You guys are going to need patched up. I don't really feel like losing knights again. For the 100,000th time this game. And I want that fairy gone. Let's do a nice big chunk of damage to you. Actually, those guys are probably more vulnerable than the knights were. At least the fairy's fire damage doesn't really hurt them. All my healers are kind of like not where they need to be. I should have had those guys throw a spear at the unicorn first anyway, because they would have gotten a little XP from that. Oh, big mistake, buddy. Will you kill it? Probably won't. I'll do 9 to 13 damage, so there's probably a safer way I can damage that thing. Well, first off, let's break this. And... Yeah. He won't kill the fairy if he only does one hit, so I'll probably use him for that. 
even with a flank attack, I think it'd be... Well, no, if he high rolled this, he'd do 25 damage. So we'll play it safe. All right, that allows these guys to get this kill. So they level up, perfect. Um, now who needs healing? Several people do. I will give some to this knight. But I think I'm going to use these guys to do it. She can ride forward and give some to... I want the healing, not the nourishing meal. Give some to the Draconians. What is behind it? Oh, it's a, I was wondering if I was doing 22 damage to it. as a box. Turn you around, turn you around again, and you're dead. Wait, who's left? Oh, there's a settler hiding out in the back. That's right. All right, everyone. Well, you know what to do. Oh. <laughs> he just got struck by lightning to death. All right. Um, so this is my city now. These are neutral halflings. I don't know if I should kill them or not. There's actually kind of a lot of them. It would be XP. Was it? Would it be a race penalty? Like if I do that, I don't run into these situations very often. Very likely victory, uh, and it's just against the small group. You know what? I'll take this. Mostly just because I want XP. I don't want units running around getting in the way, so. I'll probably kill the other group too. I mean, I am evil after all. Don't judge me. Here, you're always dying. Have some transfer pain. Good, you're cursed. That means you can't get lucky anymore. I had it with that crap. Well, actually he can get lucky because his morale is still at a hundred. Why don't you go smash him and up in that bird's face a bit. probably actually try to flank attack the halfling. Now that I think of it. I don't think I can stop him necessarily. Not quite dead yet. Pretty much exactly what I thought he would do. I wasn't thinking about the wing beat, but yeah. Okay, I want you to try to freeze that bird. Or just outright kill it. Yeah, outright kill it's fine. You need to heal yourself. We do not risk the halfling hero under any circumstances, the sorcerer, so in the back where you're nice and safe. Everybody else is pretty much patched up, I think. The knight could use a tad bit. These guys could use a tad bit, so I will give that to them just for the XP. Um, the shock troopers could use it more, but they'll be all right. They've got that thing that 
that orc thing that gives them health after they win battles, so they get a little back that way. Alright, and uh, then I guess I do this. Actually, let's just attack with one. We don't need the whole stack moving onto the tile. Use the flyer for that. Okay, armies are reversed here. Still want you to transfer pain. His curses are landing pretty well. I want that thing to probably come in and attack. I want it to come in and attack the Ice Queen after she heals herself. Looks like they're taking a more aggressive posture in this battle, so I'll let them come on over to me, I suppose. And I need to keep everybody else outside of range of the Ice Queen or else she will freeze them. This orc spearman I think I've had for a while now. <laughs> I'm not sure why he's even... He seems a little out of place for this point in the game. But he's still doing his thing. I don't think I can get really... Well, actually, yeah, I can. Get close enough to try to land a curse on the other one. It slows him down a bit, which is actually not really what I want. Probably should have actually just let it go. Uh, and I didn't get her thunderstorm up because I wasn't paying attention, but I can at least touch my faith on the orc. You can hold ground for now. could actually do a decent amount of damage if they war cried and hit that eagle in the back. Does a decent amount of damage back, but they can handle it. Go get him exalted. This guy can just smack it around a little bit. You can heal him. Alright, so that eagle is next on my list of things that need to die. Oh, crap. It has... My knight is out of movement. Um, I need to stop that thing from flying in and trying to kill my spearmen. She has a useful spell here. Actually, she does. I'll just throw this down on this guy. Might not be worth the mana to protect a unit like that, but I don't really want to lose any more units right now. Right. No one else ground and see what it does. I bet it still goes over there and tries to like, stuff. Oh, it went after the knight? Wait, what did I just lose? Oh, it's the orc exalted. He'll come back. Okay. Hey, I don't want to deal with Lucky anymore. I think I've had about enough of that crap. You know, you've been kind of buffed, so why not like, go crazy on that thing? Actually, he can't counterattack right now. Or he didn't. 
I'm not sure why he didn't. Oh, because they have 100% physical protection? But sphere protection is only 80%. Uh... Is it from my orc race governance? I know one of them gives some units physical protection, but I didn't think the spearmen were one. Holy crap, I don't think I've ever seen 100% physical protection on on any unit before. I didn't even know you could do that. I guess it would make sense if you combine sphere protection with like a base. You know what, let's science this a little bit. I don't, of course you would fail the dispel. I wanted to see what the base value is for that. She has Dispel, I think. Maybe? Well, if it's in there, I'm not seeing it. Hmm. I'm really curious about that now. But that would explain why the Eagle wasn't fighting back. He couldn't hurt him anyway. That's interesting. Let's smash some more halflings. With a big rock. So, he's still got all his movement points left. I've got other healing options, but I really would like to try to dispel that. And, and just for the science of this, to take a look at it. I can do like this. <laughs> Might also give me an opportunity to heal more stuff too. You shouldn't be able to do much. He's probably actually going to kill himself anyway. If he moves, he dies. He might, and he can't attack the Spearman, so he'll probably attack the Knight and then just get counter-attack to death. Unless he gets lucky. Well, let's find out what happens. Oh, he had Wingbeat. Okay, cool. So that went away. Let's take a look at this. He's got 20% unit has protection from physical damage. It must be my orc race governance. I'll check after this. Didn't realize those things stacked. I was thinking, I don't know, if there's something in my head that made me think that it was impossible to get physical protection because of, like, some law of the game. It's like, it's some law of the universe. I knew you could get 100% to other resistances. Like, spirit resistance is one I've used a lot. But, uh, let's finish this guy off and take another look. Does she have healing? Yes, she does. So go ahead and patch him up since he took some damage he didn't need to. And uh, I kind of feel like you've earned this, buddy. No, I don't trust you. It could get lucky. We'll take the big guns. Actually, why don't you toss a rock at him? Ah, there's his lucky. See, I called it. You know what? Just go away. So, overview, diplomacy, there we go. Orc race governance. All your orc irregular infantry and pikemen units gain 20% physical protection. Well, that's really cool. I was thinking for some reason that applied to like specifically to shock troopers, but I was wrong about that. Um, it's the it's the profit military one that I was thinking of. That's the one that gives orc shock troopers shock troopers fearsome. Okay, that makes more sense now. That is really neat. I wonder if <clears throat> excuse me. I wonder if spear protection would stack 
with Karzan's army. I mean, obviously, the sorcerer's nowhere near there, so it doesn't really do me any good. But if she was, these guys all have physical protection from toughness. So theoretically, I guess that would stack too. Huh. That's like the, uh, the Immortal Spearman. Most powerful unit of all time, and he's a tier one irregular. Well, at least most powerful against anything that only does physical damage. It's like having a it's like having a wraith in the original Age of Wonders that just came by default with 100% physical protection. That was ridiculous. They were so good. Okay, so it looks like there's a path down south, so I can go get Westville. There's also a cave entrance over there, um, which is still pretty much behind my lines. I could get Westville and then kind of see what happens from there. I don't really care if people retake this city. I'm going to absorb it. What is that? That is... Is that Goblin? That is Goblins. I'll definitely just absorb that one. Yeah. Always can use more Goblins in my Empire. Position her like this so they can move out pretty quick on the next turn. Those guys are pretty much stuck where they are. The Giants... I haven't really decided... <clears throat> Gosh, I just got to stop recording. I got something bad in my throat. I just wanted to get to the end of this turn. But the... i uh, wondering if these guys should stay here and fend off, like, little invaders or move over here with Ganon. I guess it doesn't really hurt. Actually, why don't I take this cherub down here and see what's in that city? The giants may be able to handle that on their own. Uh, no, probably not. Yeah, probably not. I don't think I'm going to take that with them by themselves, so... In fact, that cherub's probably going to die now that I did that. Because I can't move him back into my territory. I wonder if they would, uh... Well, you know what? If they run out and go after the cherub, they may not be able to regroup fast enough to get back into the city. They do have forestry, but... Maybe I can catch him in a bad spot or something. Plus, I've got spells. They don't. I was just thinking if I could get this city with the giants, it would save the halfling a trip up here. And then I could run back and forth defending the two cities. I guess it's worth a shot. Okay, and that's the end of the turn, which is good because I can barely talk right now. But um, I think that's it. I will end it here. So in case you guys have any suggestions for anything I should do before the end of the turn, let me know. Um... Otherwise, I think that's it for this one. Not a bad episode. I, I, I wish I didn't lose the glutton. I apologize for that. I prob That was probably completely avoidable. But uh, I do blame it a little bit on me losing that 55% chance. But you can't really rely on that in this game. So um, Because I, I wanted to disintegrate that frost tank. I knew that would probably kill him combined with the juggernaut. But it is what it is. So... I'm sure uh, there will be more things to Ghoul Curse, which, by the way, that's something else Red Marut mentioned. Uh, don't forget that I can be Ghoul Cursing with this guy. I haven't really had a lot of opportunities to lately, as I'm fighting mostly machines. But it is something worth keeping in mind. So, uh, Otherwise, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I will be back next week for more. Again, uh, more Planetfall. I have people coming this weekend to visit. So I am hoping to record the first Planetfall episode on, like, the first weekend in November, I think. If I have my calendar dates right, that's probably when I will do it. Um, and then I will get that other series started, and it'll run just alongside this one. It will be another single-player series. And I think, uh, I know some people have seen in the comments, but if you're wondering, um, I am planning to do a Syndicate Sinumbra build for that one. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to stay tuned. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next episode.